sing and sing. And I say he described my life to the T, described my life to the T, okay. even from being young, being able to see some Only you, you can rest my soul. church i must say so okay. of course you know my family background okay. everything we do is church but okay. um like my memory as far as i can remember i remember it was i don't even remember the song but i remember i ended up in a corner somewhere i was shouting and i couldn't stop like i was crying and speaking in tongues and stuff like it literally just came over me and i was just like i don't know what's happening but okay and so um you know, I, that was at my home church, Holy Light, back in Manassas, mm. Manassas, Virginia. Um, and since then, I've had a love for God, a love for, you know, music, um, love for worship, honestly. Worship is my my heart. How did you make that transition going into worship, singing worship music? How, how was that transition for you? Um, gee, that's a great question. I think I kind of stumbled upon it, if I can be honest. Um probably around the 18-ish, 19. I kind of, um, I was doing choirs and all that stuff. I, I had actually had my own choir. We were traveling. We had sung in different places, West Virginia. We went to Shirley Caesar's church at one point. And um, there was a part, we had a concert. And at one part in the concert, I remember literally just like worship just kind of broke out. And um, like since that moment, I've, I've longed for those moments, those intimate moments with God where the presence of God literally just kind of floods the room. I can remember from a kid, like being five, I was probably around five, maybe four, and we were in a townhouse and I remember seeing this is this might scare some people, but it might not. But okay. I can remember seeing spirits just walking throughout the house. Okay. And me being a kid, I'm like, Mom, there's people in the house. And she's like, No, there's no people in the house. And I was mm. like, Yeah, there are people in the house. And I'm literally watching these spirits just walk to and from. So by the time that they recognized that I had, I could see them. It was almost like intimidation. Who's who recognized the me? spirits? Like people don't realize that the spirit, right. the spirit realm is very real. Right. Right. And so, um, oftentimes, when you have a, a pure gift okay. or something that God wants to use, the enemy will come, will try to come after it first. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. To pervert it or to get you to be intimidated or afraid mm -hmm. of even utilizing mm -hmm. those gifts. Mm -hmm. And so, to bring that back to speed, um, by the time I turned 20, probably about 21, 22, mm -hmm. um, yes. So a prophet came to me and basically, um, I was in a service and he gave me a prophetic word and the prophetic word was about what God was doing with me. Like that I wasn't normal. Like, and I mean, when I say he described my life to the T, he described my life to the T, okay. even from being young, being able to see spirits. And that was really, um, he was basically telling me that it was my ability to see beyond what people could really mm -hmm. see. Mm -hmm. That there was a place of um, access that the Lord would give me and grant me okay. to come into the spirit realm to really um, hear the songs of heaven and to really sing and worship him and show people how to do it. And so when I got that word, literally after that, it was just, that's all I, that's all I knew. secure in me um there are times okay. when i'm not necessarily secure okay but um as far as the anointing like i i'm definitely confident in god's ability to use me okay and to and to sing and move through me like that is confident like that, that that can't be shaken not gotcha. by anybody gotcha. or anything like i know for certain that if i just you know what i mean get to that place in my worship and in my intimacy with god mm -hmm. that 
Yeah. Just you it's, until you get into the zone. Yeah. You're... Like there are times when people like people have to literally tell me like Celine, you have to open your eyes when you when you sing. You have to open your and I'm like why? Because I'm not singing for you. I'm not singing to y'all. I'm not singing for y'all. I'm singing to the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. So over the years, I've kind of developed that worship leader knack type thing. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, I sing to God and I don't really worry about the people. Wow. That, yeah. Wow. So when you started the worship in your spirit. Where did you first start at a church? Where's the church that you started at? Were you able to kind of expand that? It was a church that you were able to kind of go to and kind of grow that? Be honest, no. No? No. How it expanded was my private worship. Okay. Okay. Period. Um, I started when I really, I'm not saying I don't pray, but when I was younger, I had that hunger, that real, like, Almost like I just met Jesus kind of fun. Okay, okay. <laughs> and I would spend so much time in prayer. Mm -hmm. Um, and when I was when I was in prayer, I would hear these songs. I would hear mm -hmm. songs and those are the songs I would sing to God. And what I heard, mm -hmm. I sung back to him. Mm -hmm. And that is what developed my worship culture, my worship life. So you were receiving the songs of the Lord from the Spirit. From the Spirit. And so you would in be in my prayer closet. So usually most musicians and singers when they have that gift, they mm -hmm. able to go to a church yeah. to use it. Mm -hmm. So what was the first church where you able to kind of start, you know, using yeah. it on a regular basis for the people? Ah, I, I don't remember, to be honest. Okay. Because I've been to so many churches. Okay, okay. <laughs> but, um, well. What church are you at currently now that you're, you're that you're Well, I utilize it at? mostly, yes, at my church called, okay. called the Embassy. Embassy? The, the Embassy Church in okay. Virginia, in Fredericksburg, Virginia. Okay. Absolutely. Apostle Karen Bettis Davis is my pastor. Yeah. So I use that strongly there. It's a yielding for me. It's it's a, a moment where I just really just yield, but it's also a moment where sometimes I'm in awe. Sometimes I am in sincere awe of um, some of the things that God will pour out through me. Um, even most recently, there was a conference, one of my friends, his conference, mm -hmm. and we I went back and watched the videos, and I could literally feel the Holy Spirit off of the Philly, and I was like, God, like, how? where do I be at when you have these moments? Because mm -hmm. sometimes I feel like, Sometimes I miss what other people miss. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. Being center stage, you don't see everything that goes on out in the audience. Right. You know what I mean? Right. But to see the videos from people's perspective, and it's like, oh, wow, God really did that. You know, just to hear the songs that he would release that brought deliverance and breakthrough, it makes me grateful. Mm -hmm. It really, um, it just keeps me in that place of humility, of really just thanking him that you know, he would even find me worthy enough mm -hmm. to release his songs over his people. The things I want to do, I actually want to do a training or a teaching for worship leaders. Okay. Because um, you can usually tell, um, you can usually just sense it in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. and, and we never lead from the perspective where we're looking for a response right. but as a worship leader you should look at the response of right. the people right what is their receptivity level of what's going on in the atmosphere and mm -hmm. that's usually how you can tell mm -hmm. you can really tell when God starts breaking just by looking at how the people respond mm -hmm. to what he's breaking mm -hmm. So there has to be some some discernment, some some spiritual yes. awareness. Okay. Yeah. So that that relationship with God oh, is yes. key. It's key. It's it's important. I probably write a new song maybe about every two days. Wow. I promise you, I do. Wow. And it is simply because I go back to that origination where. I I'm in my in my bathroom, I'm in the shower or whatever. I'm just spending quality time with God. Yeah. And I just start singing what's on my heart. And next thing you know, I got a verse, I got a vamp. And it comes like that. I got a hook. And wow. next thing you know, I'm like, oh, let me get out the shower so I can go record this. Or it's most now what I've done, 
I used to do that. I used to run out the shower and go record. But now what I've gotten in the habit of doing is taking my phone in the bathroom with me. Okay. Press the record button. Okay. Get in the shower so, and just sing because I never know what's going to come. You have to do it while it's there. Yes. I wow. never know what's going to come. So usually my phone is on airplane mode and now hit that record button and I will just, you know, like, <laughs> like, like it's just normal shower day and then <laughs> it just comes out. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So do you have any songs? When, when are you planning on having your songs released? Do you have any well, game plan for that? I do have some things I've already recorded. Okay. And they are in the mixing process. Okay. Thank God. Um, But my goal, I received a couple of prophetic words. So my goal since Corona, we don't know what's going to happen. But I'm still going to do what God said. Okay. And one of the words was um, to have a live recording. Because mm -hmm. I'm the kind of person, um, I'm not a typical worship leader. Um, what do you mean by that? By that, I mean, I am, it's hard for me to have a set list. You know what I mean? Okay. It's hard for me to, I'm not the one, I mean, I will make you shout and all that. Mm -hmm. But my vein is literally the chambers of heaven. Okay. That's that's where I sit because it's about intimacy and and if you think about a chamber which is a private room, mm -hmm. everybody doesn't chamber. get in that. Right. Everybody can't get in that space. Right. right. And so um, my my love for God, I never forget this word. Apostle Teresa Teresa Hawkins gave me a word, and the word was so specific, and I knew it was God because. The word was so specific in the sense that she said, out of you flows your love for God. Mm -hmm. And it is why God trusts me with the songs that he does give me. I'm a music lover. Okay. So I love, listen, I love Earth, Wind, and Fire. Okay. I love the Gap Band. Okay. I love Stevie Wonder. Where do you get your, your I noticed you like to do your vocally. You'd like to run. You'd like to, yeah. where, do, where, do you, where do you get your, the, the, the vocals techniques from? Who you listen to to kind of inspire you to, uh, to kind of, to go out there, to try it out? When I first, first discovered runs, it was Kiara Shear. Okay. Because she was actually, and I think the song was the safest place Classic. in the whole wild world yeah. with, with her and her mom. Yeah. So that's what opened Pandora's box, if okay. you will. And then from there, it was Kim Burrell. And then from there, mm. when I actually discovered that Kim um, went to school for jazz, the vocal yeah. stuff, I was like, all right. So then I started looking into jazz and I started listening to jazz music and then it just just Open the door opened up. up my mind to everything and now I just listen to I, I can listen to blues I can listen to country I can listen to anything and I can find beauty in it and I'll mimic and then I'm like okay put that in the pocket you're gonna say that for something else how did you get comfortable doing that because if you cause some some churches some denominations do not allow that openness of listening to different styles of music yeah. so how did you get to that point where you're saying okay I'm listening to this jazz thing I'm gonna listen mm -hmm. to this rhythm and blues I'm okay, and without feeling like you're condemning, you know. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, my mom. Okay. She raised us on me. Like, she didn't. She wasn't with the whole religious thing. My mom okay. was like, "Listen, I love Jesus, but I'm gonna listen to what I'm gonna listen to." <laughs> <laughs> and, but she. That's just how she raised us. She raised us to be who we are. Mm. And she never shunned away from that. She, if, if it's something that she put on the radio and we like, I was okay. But she let us listen to it. She would never take it away from us. Now, see, I know your family, so <laughs> knowing that, knowing that, yeah. How was that? You come around singers who might not have had that exposure, mm -hmm. and your ears have been opened up. So you're hanging around them. They're singing, mm -hmm. and now you're singing. You start singing. Mm -hmm. And people are like, wow, you don't sound quite... Mm -hmm. how, how was that? It really... I didn't think nothing of it, honestly. You're, okay, you're, you're kind of young. Because I was just... Just being me. Did they hear that difference, though? Did the, the, the family hear that? Your family some, hear that? I think some did. Okay. Uh, my Uncle Larry has... Put it like this. My Uncle Larry has always been a fan. <laughs> okay. He's always been my one of my biggest fans. Um, and, my, and my dad, honestly. They all... They all... And matter of fact... They were the ones that pushed us to to like get in the studio and stuff. Because mm -hmm. I'll never forget, I used to go to my aunt Kim's house all the time, and I'd be like, "Y'all, I wrote this song," and I'll never forget. Uh, wrote this one song, and 
all of my cousins, me, my sister, mm-hmm. Amber, and her sister, mm-hmm. and and yeah, it was Candace and me to think, I think, too. Well, we all used to get together. We called ourselves God's Harmony. And we, I would literally teach them the song. I teach them all the parts. And next thing you know, we really like, okay, Aunt Kim, hear this song. And she'd be like, oh my God, it's so good. So then she'd call Aunt Candy. Aunt Candy, be like, oh, y'all gonna sing that Sunday. And then that's what we did. We sung that song on Sunday. So that's just, I, I loved it. Praying and believing God to have already established um, a music publishing company okay. um, music cuz I'm a writer and I just really feel like um, writers should be covered and protected now you have those big companies that's cool but um, I want to find ways to really kind of stay connected like keep a writers community kind of thing mm-hmm. so the music publishing thing is what I'm looking to do right um, you'll probably I'll probably be an engineer I'm like a, a, a Vocal engineer. I'm looking. Okay. I'm trying to learn how to do that. Okay. Um, you, I do it already, but vocal arranging. I would love to do that for other artists and that kind of thing. Wonderful. Um, just you know, expanding. I have businesses that I do outside of music as well. So okay. My goal, honestly, is to really just expand everything that God has given me. Okay. So in the next five years, I should have some things like established, like solid. You and I were talking a little early before we started taping about having your hand in different things in terms yeah. of so you don't you know if something drives up here you got mm-hmm. something here. Absolutely. So one of the things that you do, I like you talk a little bit about that. That you you do you do nails. Yes. And how long have you been doing it? And how did you get into that? I have been doing nails for nine years, okay. and I started doing that um, just out of pure boredom. Not even gonna really? lie to you. Um, I was like, when I was a kid, my, and now that I, my mom reminded me of this, maybe like last year, she was like, girl, that's all you used to do is play a nail polish and you used to paint your granddad's nails and play with press on nails. And when I thought about it, I was like, you know what? Yes, I did. That was my own, that was my own thing. And I come from a, a, a family background. Everything's artistic. Everything's creative. My aunts did hair. My mom does hair. You know what I mean? that kind of thing. So I kind of naturally developed everything I saw yeah, them yeah, do. Yeah. I can do hair, I can do nails, can do makeup. And so that's where it kind of originated from. Okay. But when I first got married, um, I wasn't working at the time and I was like, I need something to do. I, I need to occupy my time. And the church I was going to at the time, Strong Tower, um, Apostle Kevin, had a meeting with him and I was like, I'm just trying to figure out what I'm supposed to be doing. Like I was singing on the praise team and I was like, but I just feel like I'm not like maximizing my time, my life, whatever. And so he was like, well, whatever you figure out what you want to do, mm-hmm. let me know, come back to me and tell me. Okay. So I came back and I was like, okay, I'm going to go to nail school. I want to go to nail school. And I don't know. How long did it take you to figure that out between your conversation with the pastor? Maybe about 24 to 48 hours. Okay. So it wasn't too long. It wasn't okay. too long. Okay. Literally okay. that following Sunday, he called me up and was like, Hey, come up here. We're gonna pay for you to go to school. Wow. They paid for me to go to school, to nail school, and I have been a nail tech ever since. Of Renew You Beauty in okay. Fredericksburg. Okay. Um, it is a nail salon suite. I offer private boutique services. Okay. So they're custom, but it's a private atmosphere, very comfortable, chill, relaxed kind of thing. Okay. Um, but um, you can look, follow me on Instagram, social media is Renew You Beauty. Renew You Beauty. Everything, okay. Instagram, Facebook, you'll find it. Is that Selena's a lover. Like, okay. I'm a lover of God. I'm a lover of His presence. I'm a lover of people. Um, a lot of people tend to, just being honest. Over the years that I've mingled in the church world, have kind of shied away from getting to know me because they they hear things about me or I may look intimidating or anything like that. But I'm maybe just, maybe because you're in the spirit when you're singing, right? You <laughs> I, don't be, you be I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. But I really am a lover. Like I love people. Like I'm that friend that you want in your corner, kind of thing. So when I meet new people and I just embrace them. Until I feel like, you know, okay, you might need to go here in my okay. life, or you might need to go. I'm just a lover, period, you know? And so that's what I want people to know, that 
when you encounter me, you're gonna get the real Celine. You're you're, you're gonna get the authentic Celine, uh, the the love of God. Like I'm goofy. <laughs> you're gonna get it. You know what I mean? I love to laugh. I love to have a good time. But that's just one thing. I just love love love. You know, and I won't get too deep into my story about that, but um, you know, every every family has their highs, their lows. Sure. Or every family has their their drama, sure. and so there were some periods in my life where I felt unloved, and wow. so having been delivered from certain things, from rejection and abandonment, and all those things. Mm. Um, and also doing some self care through therapy and stuff, realizing yeah, right, that right. at the core of who I am was really um, was really love. It was really just that longing for love, the yeah. the wanting to love, and it was always there. It just got covered up by life's you know stuff. And that's, so yeah, that's very interesting because God has all created us for, for social connection, yeah, and acceptance, right, and validation, yeah, you know, absolutely. and and then being that way it makes you comfortable. Being yourself. Yeah. And I always say the best gift that you can give God is to be yourself. To be you. And be what God created you to be. Absolutely. But Celine, it was really a pleasure having you here. Thank, Thank you. you. Girl. We, did, we did another session, couple sessions, and yeah. it's really a great time. You know, so and awesome. you know, we look forward to hearing some some big things. Yes. And, you, you know, um, we'll stay connected. Absolutely. And you know, God bless you and whatever Thank you, you. Thank and you. everything you do musically, and we will definitely be in touch again.